is Ryan and Michelle, and welcome to the Celebrate Marriage Cast, where we hope to restore and reclaim godly marriages through honest and real conversations. Welcome to episode 20. We are Michelle and Ryan, and it's so great to have you with us today. Ryan, that's kind of cool. Episode 20. 20 episodes. Wow. Yeah. Yep. That's incredible. Also, um, if you're watching online, you're going to look a little different next week. Yeah, I am. Big day tomorrow. Big day. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm getting my beard trimmed up. So, shaped. You're shaped. being shaped. Shaped. Difference, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I've never done it before. It's going to be an experience. It's going to be awesome. Going with some guys from our life, our life group. Yep. Right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So it'll be great. Your face, it, your face might be colder. Colder. Either that or I'll just shave it all off. One of the two. I don't know. Are you going to get like little like lines in it or like, is it, what is it going to, what's going to happen? I have no idea. I'm excited for you, love. Yeah. It's going to be great. You'll all see. Next week. Tune in next week. A little extra incentive for <laughs> right. you to, if you watch on YouTube or right. Spotify, an right. incentive for you to tune in next week. Absolutely. <laughs> what well, are we talking about today, Ryan? Well, it's been a while since it's been us. We've had so many been. great guests yes. for the past month. We really kicked off the year with a bang. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, first off, again, episode 20. Welcome, everyone. So glad that you're listening here. And if you attend Celebrate Church, you know that we've been in this series where we've uh, been walking through the Sermon on the Mount. If you're not familiar with that, uh, the Sermon on the Mount is in Matthew chapter five. Just been going verse by verse and the series has been so good. And I'd encourage you to, to go and listen, to, to check it out. And if you don't have a church home, we invite you to come on Sunday, join us. We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you. So a couple of weeks ago, there was a message preached by, by Pastor Noah about what it really means to be blessed. And it was such a great message and really kind of telling us how we need to live from the inside out and not from the outside in. You see, when you really know Jesus, you understand that that blessing is already on the inside, meaning that you're already blessed Mm -hmm. regardless of what happens on the outside. And you know, as he was preaching this message, I, I don't know, my brain just works this way. And it was just like, I think this applies so much to marriages and relationships. And so we kind of want to dig into that specifically in really two ways. Okay. So I could share the first one, yeah. which is marriage. I mean, this is might be kind of shocking. It's made up of two individuals. Okay. Tracking with me. So here's the thing. When you get married and... I want to give this example and don't take offense because we actually did this. So if this is you, it's totally fine. But the unity candle, yeah. Ryan, picture it. Yeah. So you're at your wedding. Mm-hmm. Do you remember? We have those red candles and um, they're kind of like cool looking. And we each lit one. And then we, what do we do? We lit the big candle in the middle. Yeah. And then what happened? Two become one. Yeah. And that is in scripture. Right. The two flesh join yeah. and become one. Yep. That is. But... What happened after we lit that candle together? We actually left our individual <gasps> candles. We did? Burning. I think so. Good for us. I think we did. How do you remember that? I don't know. I don't remember much, so I could be making that up. But <laughs> Well, okay. Well, then this example, I'll shift it a little bit. But sometimes people blow them out. Right. And we actually, this analogy was given by Robert Paul, who we interviewed. One of our very first episodes yeah. wrote this book, Nine yeah. Lines That Will Destroy Your Marriage. And when people blow the candle out, it's kind of represents the two leaving, becoming one. Yeah. But in that example, they don't, you don't like physically morph into one flesh. You're still your own two people. Right. Right. I'm kind of proud of us that we kept our candles going. Anyways, the the point of the story is you, you have a third, a third circle. So there's us two people and then us as a marriage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we want to talk about that today. So how am I loving my spouse or significant other? Because um, you, you're you still an individual. It has to start with you to contribute and own how you act or react to your spouse. It starts with you. They can't do that for you. Right, right. Yeah. Man, Michelle, I'm sorry. I can't even remember. Now I'm, now I'm doubting whether or not we blew the candles out or not. You know what? It's okay. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it's probably not core to this illustration. No. It doesn't matter either way. It doesn't matter, but... It doesn't matter. I just don't remember. <laughs> I mean, anyway. I can't remember what we had for dinner last night, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Um, to, to, to reference this, and, and I think a really great example of this, sorry, we got off track there. It's good. Um, to, to reference this, I, Bob Paul references that in this book as well. This, this, um, this idea, in, and uh, he referenced it in, in the book about, you know, kind of the statement about so-and-so doesn't make me happy anymore. Mm. And I, I think there's probably a lot to, to unpack from that statement but for today, remember, you know, remember what Michelle said. This starts with me. It all starts with me. And so, you know, going back to that statement, so and so doesn't make me happy anymore. I, I think I would have to ask, am I a happy person? What am I bringing into our marriage, to our relationship? You know, am I bringing joy into our marriage? You see, if, if you're always angry, and you're always yelling at your spouse or uh, demeaning them in some way, how in the world are they ever going to make you happy? Yeah. Because part of what you're bringing in is, is maybe you're not happy. I mean, if we're just, if we're just being you know, honest, maybe you're not happy. And then when you're constantly tearing someone down, like, of course, they're not going to be like, Oh, yeah, I feel so good about myself. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I, I just, I, I think it's such a key to this illustration of, man, what am I, what am I bringing into this? If I'm truly living out, if, if, if I'm living from the inside out or the outside in, yeah. it all starts with me and it starts with what's inside. Yeah, we've talked about, Ryan, that's just so good. That is so good. What are you bringing to it? And maybe that's where you need to start dealing with some things from your past, some issues that are kind of still triggering you or holding you up. You know, uh, we we have a group here for herds, habits, and hangups. Maybe that's something you need to delve into. Celebrate recovery. Yeah. They're an amazing group. Um, you know, maybe it's getting a therapist or or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, there there's so many resources out there, but. What are you bringing into it? Thinking of those two candles, like you still have your own self and that's real, really, you know, we've talked some of our earlier episodes of the year, kicking off the new year about leadership and development. Mm -hmm. Do you need to skill up on something? And how are you caring for yourself so that you can be a great spouse? Right. I want right. to add another part to that, Ryan, the, the whole concept of happiness. And I think that you're selling yourself short and you're not dreaming big big enough if your only goal of marriage is for you to be happy. Mm. Sure. We, we've talked about this here at Celebrate Church that God is so much more than being happy. God wants you to be holy. Mm -hmm. And this is another, another point that Bob Paul illustrated in the book we just referenced, that if, if you are only wanting to be happy, think about what you're leaving on the table, right? Like we can have a conversation, tell some jokes at home and I may be like, oh, I feel really happy. But when you have a really, when you go past that and you allow yourself to experience a deep, intimate, personal relationship with your spouse and you're growing in the fruits of the spirit and you're giving off the fruits of the spirit, you know, that's what we say here at Celebrate, our mission, our vision is that you would meet Jesus and our mission is that you live it out and be Jesus. Think of how much richer that is yeah. than, than just being happy. Like happy is almost just such a surface level end goal. And you're leaving so much more on the table if you're not going for that. Like think of the journey that you can have and the discovery and all of the moments that you can have with your spouse. Yeah, absolutely. And I think- I think to further that, Michelle, I think a lot of those growth moments come in valleys yeah. that aren't happy. Hmm. I mean, I, <laughs> I've, a lot. I've, I've, I've not, I've not, you know, uh, you know, but, but if, if that, if that was if that's what I was seeking, yeah, you're never, you're never going to have that growth yeah, because you're going to be constantly be disappointed because happiness is fleeting. Yeah. And, we can attest that think, things happen, things come up. And those have been such rich, growing moments for us. Right. They're not easy. I'm not saying that. Right. Yeah. 
I actually heard this on a Peloton ride today. I'm doing this. Oh my gosh, you guys, be in prayer for me for my self-discipline and longevity. I'm doing this 75 medium challenge where I have to do all these things. And one of them is exercise 45 minutes a day. So I'm squeezing in exercise and every nook and cranny of my day is getting super crazy. I'm on day 30. I'm so proud of myself. Today, I was doing a Peloton ride over lunch and they said, you know what? Like, um, don't be in the middle And the instructor was like, don't be in the middle. Think of it, like think of those heart monitors where it's like, it's it's up and then it's down and it's up and then it's down. And if in life you're just like in middle, maybe you're settling for happy or maybe you're just like, whatever. If you're you're in the middle, that's actually flat line. That's Mm. actually a non heartbeat. That's actually not not good. (laughs) (laughs) So, and it made me think of the sermons. Pastor Reed has done this. Pastor Keith has done this. But where they'll draw the heartbeat on the board, you know, yeah. like up, down, up, down. Mm-hmm. And they'll say, hey, this is like, this might be your life. It might be this good moment high on the mountain. Yay, promotion. And then a couple months later, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just got let go. Or, you know, pet died or whatever. Down, low valley. And then you're high, then you're low. But that actually, that is, that's life. And that whole thing is just a blip in time. But um, that, I mean, that makes up your life yeah, if you can find right. joy in the middle of that. Right. And some of those valley moments actually make the next high moment all the sweeter, you know? Absolutely. It's just it's just part of life. Yeah. But and anyways. It, yeah. And it all comes back to, again, are you living from the inside out or the outside in? Yeah. You know? And that's that's really what it boils down to, you know? So. Yeah. And by that, Ryan, you mean, just to clarify, so inside out versus outside in. So, from God or from the world. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So okay. so from from if if you want to look at this like if you're living from the outside in, your life's going to be dictated by the circumstances and what happens to you. Versus living in that gratitude, in that gift that you have in Jesus from the inside. You yeah, know, that's we, great. we we talk about here here at Celebrate, you know, the the vision is is you know, meet Jesus. And then you go and be Jesus. And that's exactly what we're talking about today. Yeah, Yeah. that's great. Yeah. The other really point we wanted to talk about, you know, in in regards to this, this, this message and this, this idea of living from the inside out is, uh, you know, as Michelle referenced that, I think it's great, you know, using that unity candle example, you have the two individual candles, you light them. The middle candle is signifying you as a couple. Uh-huh. And I, I think we can look at this same concept then as a as a couple and, you know, looking at it through the lens of marriage, through relationships. And, you know, again, if if you have a relationship that you're living from the outside in, you're always going to be swayed by the circumstances, by those outside circumstances. You know, we see this a lot, I think, when couples start to put conditions on things like... I'll love you. I'll show you affection if you do the laundry, Mm. if you put the kids to bed. And all of a sudden, this this love, it's, it's really paving the way for a conditional love, which is not what God intended for marriage. Yeah, I think that's a slippery slope to go down too, because if you start to put those conditions on, then you almost look for it more and become callous. And then, I don't know. I, I just, yeah, that's a slippery slope. Yeah. Uh, so there, there, was a, there was a book written a, a while ago called Love and Respect by Dr. Emerson Egrich. We did that as a life group. Yeah, we did. Years ago. We that's did. That's a fantastic book. Yeah. Total, I'm just gonna throw this in, total, um, I feel like we give you guys a lot of book recommendations and I hope um, I hope we do a lot of the reading for you. So I hope that helps, yeah. but it is, these are great resources too. It was such a eye-opening book to read on the love and respect part because it talks about how women really crave love and men crave respect. Right, right. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and in, in the book, uh, Dr. Egerich talks about something that's called the crazy cycle. And I think this is such a great analogy of this. So as Michelle said, men have this craving, this longing for respect. Women have this longing and craving for love. So Egrich talks about this thing called the crazy cycle, where basically what happens is a man perceives his his wife 
responding in disrespect. He then therefore responds or reacts to her in an unloving way. And the cycle goes round and round and round. Sure. Because they just continue responding in the way that is really at the other person. And, you know, I, I think this is really, it's exactly what we're trying to illustrate here in that when you're living and acting based out of circumstances and something, whether your spouse does or don't do, it, it really is a crazy cycle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it requires someone to break that cycle too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely it does. It's it's a choice. Yeah. I don't know for sure because I haven't personally surveyed women on this, but I feel like women sometimes do use like intimacy as a weapon. That's one of the things we talked about yeah. as we were preparing the yeah. show. Um, and you would ask if I could just share a little on it. And um, I, I think that that, that also, you know, it's, uh, you know, gosh, you didn't, do the laundry and you forgot this and you know what? Nope. Uh, shop's closed. Nope. Just go to bed. <laughs> um, but, but think about the damage that that starts to do because you, it's that crazy cycle. And maybe it's even subconsciously that you're just sort of like pushing your spouse away, but be aware of that because, you know, if you, if you think, well, we'll be intimate once you finish whatever that project or whatever. It shouldn't, sex should never be a consequence or like a reward. You know, it shouldn't, shouldn't be a punishment. Holding it out shouldn't be a punishment either. So um, that's not what God intended for intimacy. So just one example of, of that kind of um, crazy cycle. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I think just add it, like it, it then becomes conditional. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I mean, based on like, go back and watch the last like three episodes here yep. <laughs> uh, that, that we've done. And that's that's not what God intended for right. this to be a conditional, well, we'll be intimate if you do this. Yeah. And it's just, it's really a damaging thing because it, it you know, I think from a, a man's perspective, it, it means really that, well, you, you only want me if I do this. Mm-hmm. If I if I do this chore or that chore, that's really it's really hurtful. It's really damaging. Yeah. When you have that that mindset. Yeah. Yeah. So break the crazy cycle. Break the cycle. Absolutely. So, you know, as as we wrap up here, you know, remember that when you have Jesus, you really truly have that true blessing. And that pours out from what's inside. That means that regardless of the circumstances, we'll live and serve like Jesus. So a few weeks ago, we had Dr. Kim and and Nancy Kimberling on from Awesome Marriage. They were so amazing. It was, it was oh, so I good. I loved them. But it, they made such a profound statement, and and I this has stuck with me, you know, weeks later here, and I just I keep thinking about it that that your marriage here is the closest relationship to a heavenly relationship that you'll ever have here on earth. Wow. And it was so it was so impactful and it just it hit me it's like are you are you really truly treating your spouse that way? You know, is it is it imitating your relationship with God? Wow. Because you know, we, are you putting conditions on your marriage, on your love that you have with your spouse? Yeah. And I think it's such a, such a powerful thing as we, as we really truly live from the inside out that we're going to, to, to act in our relationships and we're going to serve and love as Jesus did. And not short circuit ourselves either by having a goal of being happy, right? That was yeah. the first point. Yeah. And for that, when I think back to when we got married, the pastor from Celebrate That um, did the ceremony. He had said, Ryan, Michelle, God 
will use you together as a married couple for so much more than you possibly could imagine and so much more than you could possibly do on your own. I never really knew the full breadth of what that would mean until now looking back 12 years in and being like, wow, like I get, I think I get what he means. Like, and it's not just this goal of being happy. It's this goal of being holy and letting God use us and really going through these seasons together. I mean, I'm not saying that, we're not saying you should be in a miserable marriage. That's not it. But yeah. just go beyond that, just happy. Yeah. That surface yeah. level. And and I think, you know, I think just, just again to recap, it starts with me. What choices am I making? What am I bringing in to my relationship? to my marriage. And then as a couple, how, how am I loving my spouse? Am I loving and serving my spouse like Jesus did? That's what's really truly living inside out means. So great. Thank you for joining us today on the Celebrate Marriage Cast. If you'd like further help or resources on marriage and family, visit us at celebrate.church slash marriage. Additionally, we are finding ways to connect with you. And like we said last week, it is our call line. We would love for you to call in and let us know what you thought of this episode or something you've thought about a previous episode, something you've learned or implemented or an aha moment. It's a message line. You don't have to talk to a person or a pastor. You can just leave your feedback and we would love to play that on air to encourage other listeners as well. That number is 605-951-0110. We can put that on our screen and the show notes as well. So 605-951-0110. We would love to hear from you. We will look we look forward to listening to those too. Yeah, right. Absolutely. I really hope people call and yeah. take advantage of that. So have a great week. Hi there, my name is Chris. This broadcast is impacting my life. It's really, really encouraging and you guys are opening up a whole new ballgame. It's a topic that people don't talk about. You guys are rocking it. Continue to plant that seed of life. Thank you. Bye. 